Hi, I'm Dave Dooling, Education Director at the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a simple spectroscope using a DVD, file folders, and some other materials, and use it to dissect the rainbow and pull secrets from sunlight and other sources. And we'll connect this to this and this. We'll do it with a spectroscope, a homemade version of precision instruments the scientists use to study Earth, Sun, stars, rocks on Mars, and well, just about anything. You need a blank recordable DVD, tape, scissors, a file folder, ruler, pencil, black construction paper, and a credit card. A cell phone with a camera will be useful too. Here's the design. Two long, narrow cardboard tubes plus an end cap, both built from file folders. At the bottom is a DVD-R to spread light into the rainbow. It has an end cap with a slit and a special extension for observing the sun. But first, what's it all about? The word spectroscope comes from Latin words specter for image or ghost and scope, to look. Sir Isaac Newton applied it to the range of colors he produced when he used a prism to show that white light has all colors combined. Today, it means the range of radiation from radio waves, heat rays, to visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. It's all electromagnetic radiation at different energy levels, but all moving like waves. And waves interfere with each other to make higher peaks and deeper troughs or just cancel each other out. You can see this at the beach or even in a swimming pool. Here's another trick. Light from a point source radiates in a series of waves and sharp edges act like a line of point sources. Light with the same wavelength will interfere to appear brighter or to cancel itself out. With a grating and a slit so the light doesn't overlap, you get a nice rainbow. Okay, that's all very pretty, but how do we use it? That discovery started 200 years ago when Joseph Ritter von Fraunhofer was trying to make a better light source for testing lenses and discovered a dark line in the spectrum of fire. He found the same line in the spectrum of the sun and then another 573 lines in the solar spectrum and then similar lines in the spectra of stars. Fraunhofer wound up inventing the most powerful tool for astronomy since the telescope, but it took some more work. A half century later, Gustav Robert Kirchhoff and Robert Bunsen, as in Bunsen burner, showed that the dark lines were produced by cool gas absorbing tiny slices of light emitted by a hot source. If the same gas is hot on its own, it will glow in the same lines. Over the next century, physicists discovered that the lines are the chemical fingerprints of atoms giving up energy in unique patterns. Now we could determine the chemical makeup of stars even though we can never reach them. The Industrial Revolution made it possible to machine grooves into metal or glass to get those sharp edges that dissect light with greater precision. So where can you get a precision grading? You have them at home. Compact discs and digital versatile discs, CDRs and DVDRs. Microscopic pits in the discs represent the zeros and ones of data that a player reconstructs into music and video. The pits also act as the edges of a diffraction grating. That's why you get the rainbow shining off a disc when you hold it in the light. It's not as precise as the ones used in laboratories and telescopes, but it's good enough for us to explore the basics. To build the spectroscope, print the drawings in the PDF and copy the dimensions onto an open file folder. The printouts aren't full length because most of it is just straight lines, as shown in the small drawings. Use the tip of your scissors to score the fold lines. Score several times to make it easier to cut out the eye hole. Cut black construction paper 1 16th of an inch narrower so it will fit inside the body. This will absorb scattered light. Tape the main body together with the fifth side folding over to stabilize the box. Do the same with the solar extension, including lining it with black paper. Wrap a short section of straw in aluminum foil and tape in place at the halfway mark on the ramp. This is the solar reflector. Tape the cross piece in place to stabilize the extension. Cut the end cap. Carefully cut two small pieces of black paper. Tape one to cover almost half the opening. Position the second half and use the credit card to ensure a narrow, even slit. Narrow slits make a fainter but sharper spectrum. Tape the flaps in place. Finally, tape the DVD in place. Now, what to explore. 
A fluorescent lamp is the best place to start. Fluorescent lamps electrify mercury vapor to produce a few spectral lines. A coating inside the tube absorbs and re-emits as something resembling daylight. Shine a fluorescent lamp into your spectroscope and you will see the entire rainbow plus the bright lines produced by the mercury vapor. Try an old-fashioned incandescent lamp. It has no lines but gets brighter as it moves into the red and infrared spectra. Try an LED lamp. You'll see it is strongest in the blue. That's because this is really a type of fluorescent lamp. The light emitting diode is blue and a chemical coating absorbs and re-emits to mimic daylight. Now let's try the sun, but not by looking directly through the spectroscope. Instead, add the solar extension and stand with your back to the sun. The aluminum foil on the straw acts as a slit for the sunlight. You will see the rainbow, of course. But if you get a good, steady view and look closely, you should see some very narrow dark lines. Those are the Fraunhofer lines. Like the light bulb, the sun radiates in all colors, but cooler gases in the solar atmosphere absorb and leave their fingerprints in the spectrum. Take another look in the orange. You will see at least one line. It's really two very close lines called Fraunhofer D. It's the same absorption line that Fraunhofer found in the spectrum of burning wood. It's sodium, an important component of trees. Try your spectroscope on one of those weird orange street lights. Hot sodium produces two orange lines in exactly the same place as the absorption lines in burning wood and the sun. Is the sun made from burning wood? No, that would have burned out a long time ago. It's made of every chemical found here on Earth. And those spectral lines let us measure the invisible interior of the sun, magnetism and sunspots, and how fast stars are moving. The lines are from sodium in the solar atmosphere. Want to experiment more? Try different sized slits. Study the neon light at a pizzeria or glow sticks. Hope you enjoyed building your spectrograph. Hope you enjoy exploring the universe with it. Tune in again for another fun episode of Virtual Rocketeer Academy.